Hey Flosstube, this is Kim, aka Spartan Stitcher, and it is the 16th of September 2019, and, and I'm here for Flosstube number 34. Hopefully everyone is doing well. We are halfway through September. Um, the, the sun is actually shining today. We actually have a high of 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is impressive considering all last week it was gray and rainy and 60s about 60 degrees all week. Um, we've had a record amount of rainfall this month here in North Dakota, in my section anyways. And this morning, the mosquitoes were unreal. I have never seen so many mosquitoes, you know, the air so thick with them. Um, you know, walking to school with my two girls. It, I mean, we were constantly doing this, like, don't stop moving. Don't stop swatting, and it it was unbelievable. Um, my oldest is one of those that the mosquitoes absolutely love, and so she was on her bike, and I told her ride faster, don't don't you know go the same pace as that we are walking with my youngest. I said ride faster so they don't eat you up because I hadn't sprayed her with bug spray first thing in the morning, and then when we got to the school and the bike racks are actually in a grassy area, well that was even worse than, you know, walking by the concrete. So I said, I'll lock up your bike, give me your keys. And I said, go get in line and just get away from the thickest part of the mosquitoes. It was bad. Like it's, it was to the point, it's like, it was about 53 degrees Fahrenheit this morning, but no one wanted to play outside because the mosquitoes were awful. So little kids, and then probably after school lets out today, we won't be playing outside just because the mosquitoes are that bad. So, all right, let's talk about some stitching. Uh, this week in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, we had to choose a path, the light path or the dark path, and uh, explain how your pieces fit those paths. You had to do your chosen path first before you did any stitches for the other path. I went with the light path and I used Friendship Compass by Glendon Place. This is a freebie in the Glendon Place Stitchers group. Links are below in the description box. Let me make sure I have this turned the right way. Um, I did my stitches in Acru Floss, but it's also a Friendship Compass, which makes you think, you know, friends and their morals will help guide you along the way. So it's going to be hard to see, but I had one corner of the Acru done. Uh, almost done. So I finished up this corner. I did this corner and all of that corner down there. So I have one corner of acre floss left to go and then um, a square border and beads. So that was 600 stitches put into this one and I do want to finish this this year. And once I put those beads in the empty spaces and, and put the darker colors around it, I think the acre will stand out a lot more. Again, there are no colors chosen for this freebie chart. The only guidance that um, they, the designer gave was that the darker the symbol, the darker the color should be. So I believe there's one, two, three, four, five, six colors of floss and five colors of beads if I remember correctly. So I have beads already waiting for that one. Um, so 600 stitches into that. And then for the dark path, I chose to stitch on Witchy Tea Time by the Primitive Hair. I have this in the 2014 Halloween issue of Just Cross Stitch. So there's your design because these are, these are scheming witches that are up to no good. So that's the dark path. I did 400 stitches. So I brought the orange border for witchy tea time over. I did this single stitch black second part of the border and I brought these squares over. So that was 400 stitches. Um, this orange is the variegated floss from my grandma's sash. So it's unlabeled. I don't know what it is. And I'm trying to, um, like the, the sections of variegation are pretty long. And so I have a, diff a few different cuts in the floss. And I'm just trying to keep changing it up so it's not like a huge section of orange. 
and then a you know huge section of the light so trying to change it up and we'll see how much I can get done before I run out of that floss and this is 32 count um, Salem by Color and Cotton that's what the name of that so I finished that uh, Tuesday Monday Tuesday Wednesday I had you know weekend plans starting on Friday for full coverage fanatics so I was like okay what do I stitch on for one day on Thursday and I pulled um, half blood prints back out because I'm still working on this one for by the numbers in full coverage fanatics so this is the one I started on September 1st so I'm right here in uh, the background on page one this one is the one where there's 35 colors in it so not not that many colors um, I finished up an extra credit prompt for a piece with potion in it because um, Harry is holding a goblet full of the potion that Dumbledore had to drink to get the locket. Horcrux. So I finished that prompt. I did over 700 stitches on Thursday. And what's interesting to note when you look at this, so there's where I am now. There is only, there's six more ninja stitches to do in, in like four different colors. And then the rest of the empty space on that page is one color. One color, I think it's uh, DMC 738. So it'll go really fast once I get those six ninja stitches put in. And I am now, I believe I'm at around 3,800 stitches and I need 4,800. I didn't write it down, but so I'm about a thousand stitches shy, I believe, from by the numbers on this one. And then, okay, so my plan was, according to my video last week, is that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was going to spend on Friends Forever by Ann Stokes as my oldest full coverage whip for Ancient Adventures weekend in full coverage fanatics. But on Monday or Tuesday, I was watching Floss Tube and I uh, watched Kim in Canada's Floss Tube video where she talked about the Templar Prophecy, which you know I've, I've been waiting to start. I wanted to finish Kim a lot and I wanted to finish Guardian Angel before I started Templars. But she said something very interesting. She said that she was starting it on Friday the 13th because of the, of the significant history with Friday the 13th in regards to the Templars. And my ears perked up. I'm like, huh? I don't know anything about that. And so I listened some more and she said that, it, you know, for the Templars specifically, it was October, Friday the 13th. But, you know, we're close enough. Plus it's a full moon. And so I paused the video and I went to Google and there, um, the whole Friday the, th Friday the 13th superstition originated because that was when the Templars were being taken down. So you can read more about that on Google if you want. But so here's this perfect opportunity to start the Templar Prophecy on a Friday the 13th. But I wasn't done with Angel yet. So I immediately, after Googling and reading all about it, I immediately sent a message to Brittany, uh, Blimey Cat, also Ingleside Imaginarium, because I knew that she also wanted to start the Templar Prophecy. And she had said that she was going to wait until I could start it. So until wait until I finished Angel. And so I, I told her about the, the Friday the 13th link, which was news to her as well. And we're like, okay, obviously we need to start it on Friday the 13th. So my Ancient Adventures weekend only ended up being two days so that I could start the Templar Prophecy on Friday the 13th. This is a long dog sampler that released this summer. I've shown it to you guys before, and I've even shown you my fabric, I believe. So I started this. I am using a 32 count uh, Silvery Moon, which is a fabric by uh, Weich Weichel. I can't even talk right now. I, my brain's not working. It says Weigert base because it's got the orange stripe. 
the um you're not going to be able to tell but this is a very pale blue if you think of dmc 762 how is that real light icy blue that's the color of this and then the flosses i'm using i'll show you the floss box in a minute there's my start i started in the bottom right corner because everyone else i've seen starts top left and i want to see something else I'm a, I'm a lemming, but I'm a do-your-own-thing lemming. I want to... So, if you look at those marching lions holding their, their standards, there's the beginning of one lion. So, there's my start on that. And the floss I'm using for this one is from the, the elderly woman's uh, stash that I bought a couple years ago. These are all unnumbered. I believe they might be Bucilla flosses from way back when. Because there's one or two bobbins that actually say Bucilla. And I'm going to be using the three shades of blue on my piece. So I have the most bobbins of this, this uh, lighter, lightest blue. So that's going to be my, my predominant color. But then I also have a lot of this darkest blue. So that'll be my second and then a few items in this one because the the pattern when you buy it it tells you how many meters of floss depending on what fabric count you're using and so i i converted it i even wrote it down on my cover page so it said 32 count um estimated 273 meters so i converted that to yards into skeins and I got over 37 skeins of floss. And with that lightest blue, I only have, I believe, like 25 or 27. So obviously the one color is not enough. So that's why I'm going to incorporate all three color blues, which I think all go well on that ice blue fabric. They all go well together. And then I'll use these on something else. I have another project in mind for that, for um, at least these greens. So I like to use stuff up. So I'm gonna be using those flosses on that one. And when I use up the when I use up a bobbin, I'm gonna keep the empty uh, cardboard bobbin in there just so just for you know being a nerd and wanting to know how many skeins I'm going through. So then Saturday and Sunday was time for uh, Ancient Adventures in Full Coverage Fanatics to work on my oldest full coverage whip, which is my oldest whip overall right now, Friends Forever by Ann Stokes. I started this on the 1st of January 2017. And I had to start a new page coming right over here on the throne on the, in the second row. Now, what I had forgotten is that this is not on pre-gridded fabric. It's on 25 count Lugana that's just plain. So I had to grid a whole, whole new page. Plus, I had to mark in easy PDF um, all the stitches that I had done when I feathered from the page above and, and the page on the side. So Saturday was a busy day because my husband was getting ready to leave. So he wanted to clean the house, do the laundry, run some errands. Plus I had to grid the page and mark what I had already stitched. So Saturday I only put in one length of floss. But Sunday, when he was gone, and it was just me and the girls, I had a really good stitching day. Despite being, you know, single parent ops and, you know, doing everything myself, I put in over a thousand stitches, on 10 stitches on Saturday. And I only worked in two colors. So here's the whole thing so far. You can see the page I'm working on. Let me fold this in half so I can bring it closer up. Okay, so I gridded the page. Um, I had some of this black done, but I brought the rest of the black down. A little bit of black over here. And then I did all of this brown color that's scattered around the page. So there's a big chunk of that brown color right here and coming up and then it just, you know, it's highlight, it's giving me the, the, the foundation of the page, if you will. You can see how the, the curtains come up and how the woodwork of the throne comes down. 
and some more of the, the hand carvings in the throne. So it's giving me a good foundation to work more on this page. So that was a really good weekend for me. I like the, you know, just a couple of days to dedicate to, to one piece and see where you can get. Get you that motivation to work on a piece. So it was over a thousand stitches on that one. And then Guardian Angel, the piece I've been working on every day since I every day since I finished Camelot. She's done. I finished her this morning. I told you I was going to finish her in September. Well, you know, I could never t really accurately predict how fast it's going to stitch up. Now, the last time, I'll show you the picture. Last time you saw her, let's see if I can get this without the glare. I had just started her really poofy sleeves. I had done the green and just started her poofy sleeves. So I finished her sleeves, I did all of the baby, and then I did her head, and she's done. And again, I did not stitch the little oval flowery frame around her. And of course, the sun is going to go right through the linen. There you go. There she is. I'll go back here so you can see her. See if I can hold her straight and not get the glare. So there she is. She's all done. So she's completely as charted except for omitting that oval frame. And I subbed in Petite Treasure Braid instead of working with Nasty DMC Metallic. So I'll bring her in close so you can see her face and the baby. You can see I finished her poofy sleeves. There's the baby she's holding. She's got more flowers in her hair. And I love her. She's gorgeous. So that was my third major finish that I wanted to do this year. I wanted to finish Moon Hair, which I finished in March, I believe. I wanted to finish Camelot, which I finished in August. And I wanted to finish Guardian Angel. So she's done. Um, I don't know. I do want to get her framed. I don't know when I'm going to frame her. Um, on the subject of framing, I did talk to Hobby Lobby locally about framing Camelot. And even before I could show them a picture, I, you know, I asked them, I said, do you do five, can you do a five-sided frame? And they said, no, like immediately before I could show her a picture, show her a picture. She's like, no, I'm sorry. We can't do that because I wanted, I've got Camelot right here because they were hanging on the same, on the same hanger, but I wanted a frame to echo the shape of the piece. So I told you my other option was to roll it up in a mailing tube and take it with me when I go to Louisiana to the LNS there. Well, I'm, I'm, trying to get a hold of the framer, the, the owner of the shop, who's also the framer. Every time I call, she's not there. So we're playing phone tag. I'm trying to um, ask her if she can do a five-sided frame before I go through the effort of taking it down there. If not, my other option is, you know, a rectangular frame with a five-sided cut mat. So a mat cut out in the shape of that piece. So we'll see, but I want, I really wanted something that looked like the cover. I wanted a five-sided frame like this. So we'll see if, if Linda at Knots and Needles can do it. Otherwise I might have to come up with something else. Um, so that's the update on that. Now for my personal 90 day challenge, you know, those were both non-full coverage and I was trying to think, well, do I, do I sub in another non-full coverage piece for the rest of the month? I could, I could work on, um, Friendship Compass because I want to finish that. I could, uh, sub in the black work piece that's 
like less than a day's effort done from being done. But none of those really sat, really sat well. My other my other choice was I could work on Big Red Ship every day for the next two weeks until you know the end of the month. Well, none of those was like yeah I could do them all. You know I could I could knock out all my finishes, but none of them really gave me a warm fuzzy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work daily on half blood prints. Because I still need that, you know, a thousand extra stitches. It's almost to the really easy stage. I can just put in a few lengths of floss each day. Um, my lengths of floss, when I'm, when I'm doing fill-in work like this, I can get 80 to 90 stitches in one length of floss. So I can easily, I can easily get the thousand that I need, maybe get a page finish if I keep working on him daily. Or at least until I, I leave. I don't really feel like taking this piece down to um, Louisiana. I've taken, for me, for my own taste, it's a whole lot easier to take a piece that's not on pre-gridded fabric um, if I take a full coverage piece just because it's not as stiff, it's softer, it's easy to fold up um, rather than trying to take this piece because I probably won't won't uh, check any bags. I'll just take a um, backpack with clothes for the weekend. So we'll see. If I can get um, a page finish on this one before I leave on the 27th of September. So this will be my daily piece to work on by the numbers for that one. I still need to start by the numbers 1200 on Hogwarts Travel Poster. So I'll work that into homework and extra, extra credit tasks in the next two weeks. And then for this week in the School of Magical Stitches, um, the homework is all about potions and uh, defense against the dark arts with Snape and Slughorn. There's five different tasks. You must do them in order. And there's a bonus if you can get one whip to fit all five tasks. Well, I could have stretched my stories to get Haunted Mansion stretched portraits, get the pun, to fit all five tasks. But that's not a piece that's on my priority to work on this month. And I really want to get things that are on my, you know, my monthly goals uh, done. So I'm going to be working on Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. God, you guys just don't see my focus today. And by that, I mean my phone. Um, so the task, the first one is a mind game with Professor Snape being, you know, his silly sly self. This one, I'm going to say, is a mind game for me because of the restrictions and goals I've put on myself to get it done with uh, wanting to stitch it over the four years that we're here in North Dakota, one page every three months. So it takes some de dedication and determination to stick to those goals. Uh, and then the other four tasks are all about different potions. The first one is wormwood, which is a type of plant. Well, there's plants on here. So there's my uh, link for that one. The um, next one is a type of eggshell that's an ingredient for the uh, Felix Felicis. And that's the only one I, I don't have because you actually have to stitch in gray or silver. Um, so I'm going to be doing penalty stitches for that one so I won't get bonus points. Um, and then the fourth task is uh, what would you smell if you uh, were around the... Uh, I have to think before I say this word, uh, the love potion, if you will, the amortensia serum. Well, there's a horse there. Obviously, I would smell horses and hay and leather. So there's a horse there. And then for Veritas serum, what truth have you learned about yourself and your stitching? Well, mine on this particular piece, if you are a regular viewer is to double count or double check your fabric orientation because you can make mistakes because <laughs> if you remember I started stitching stitching this one and I had over two pages done and my fabrics turned the wrong way but luckily you know it, once I stitched a little bit of cotton fabric on the bottom 
I will have enough room to stitch the whole piece. So, uh, I will be doing, let's see, 800, 1200 stitches on this one because of penalty stitches for the, uh, not having the gray. And I'm guessing that will get me through this page and well into the next one. Those 1200 stitches. Because if you look at where I'm at, so it's going to be this section right here that I'll be stitching. There's that ship right there. So I'll be doing this, this part before the plants. So that's what I'll be working on this week along with the Hogwarts poster. Um, some other things that happened this week. You know, I was working on the panda piece with the Shakespeare quote for my friend in California who is about to have her second baby that has also uh, suffered miscarriages. And I don't know how many of you saw uh, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie. She put out a video that was like a design with me showing how she used her program. Well, that was mind blowing for me because the program I was using can't do a bunch of things that she was doing at the blink of an eye. So I got the trial version, was trying out the trial version of her program and designing the, you know, the panda holding the rainbow heart with a Shakespeare quote. And then I had just gotten to the point where I um, chose what flowers I was going to add to it, which I was going to do the next day. And my computer restarted and updated. And I had significantly like, I had imported the panda and resized it and, you know, tweaked it so that it would look right when it was resized. Yeah, I lost everything because it was a trial version. And I was like, hey, it's not saved. So then I was sharing, you know, I was ranting a bit to, to Anne of, uh, you know, my, my co-admin and full coverage fanatics and of fiber floss and fiction podcast. And then I, of course my husband, I was complaining to, and then I, I told my friend because, you know, babies do the third week of October. And obviously if I have to start over from scratch, it's going to take me a, a bit longer. So I was looking on Etsy and trying to figure out, you know, Hey, this is the chance to change the layout, change what I was doing. And I discovered that I had forgotten that I had a certain pattern because it was, um, I have this pattern I want to show you in, um, a digital magazine. And I forgot that I had it. And this is a quote that she wanted. Though she be but little, she is fierce. This is, let me see if I can hold this and get you to focus. Ugh, stop. This is uh, Stitch Rovia. That's not what I said. Stitch Rovia pattern that I have when it was originally published in the magazine. Oh my gosh. Don't touch anything. That pattern. I'm sure you've all seen it before. It's about 60 by 80, so pretty easy and quick to stitch up. And I showed that to her and I said, how about two separate pieces? I can stitch up this Shakespeare quote as it is, and then I can stitch up the panda separately. Because the problem was trying to, you know, get a layout where it all worked together. And she's like, I don't want to ask too much of you, just stitch the quote. And I'm like, are you sure? Because I, I can understand, you know, the, the nursery is panda themed and the rainbow heart has significance because we've experienced losses. She said, no, just the words. So I'm going to stitch that, uh, sh stitch Rovia piece first, and then we'll see what else I can come up with. Maybe some Christmas ornaments, something... As I see that you're out of focus, um, something, I'll, I'll stitch something else for her too. 
but not with such a time crunch as they used to in a little over a month. So that's my other plans for this week. I've also been uh, trying to finish grading year five. We only have one event left to grade. And I think that's uh, Slytherin reading extra credit. And then Hufflepuff and, and Slytherin will be done for year five grading. Um, I wanted to talk a few minutes real quick about um, my migraine. Thank you for everyone. Or my headache slash migraine. Thank you for everyone who was saying they hope they feel hoped I felt better. Um, I experience one migraine a month. It is very predictable. I know exactly when it's going to happen because the migraines I get are estrogen withdrawal migraines is what they're called. Um, it's not something I've experienced my whole life, only about two and a half years. So after my youngest was born, because your body completely changes and it's related to my cycle and it's very predict predictable as I said. It starts out as a headache at the beginning of the day and I know as the day goes on I'm just going to keep getting more and more miserable until the end of the day I'm at migraine stage and I can't tolerate anything. Well last week's was even worse because I was wearing glasses which you know it's different for your eyes when you're used to wearing contacts all every day and then you wear glasses it seemed to make the headache go worse faster. Um, plus the base exercise was going on so my husband wasn't here and I was you know doing single parenting through dinner and yeah let's just say I'm glad my my girls are well behaved that I've I've done the 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 training slash parenting to make sure that they don't get into trouble so that I could lay down and they can entertain themselves um <coughs> I have tried different things to try to alleviate the headaches and Pretty much so far all I've been able to do is shorten the amount of time. Um, any birth control that I take to try to manipulate my cycle to having few, fewer per year means less headaches per year but the headache is significantly worse because you're taking artificial hormones. So um, I really do need to go see the doctor, probably the GYN to ask about help for that. but. My phone's about to change files, so happy stitching, everybody, and I will see you next week.